Hi, I'm Matthew and welcome to the quick start video for Handycam from Plugin Everything. In this video, we're going to cover installing Handycam, setting it up while inside of After Effects, and then go over each of the features, starting with Orbit, which covers how to control, well, the orbit of the camera around the main controller, Look At, which is a group of features controlling and covering how the camera looks and some of its local transforms, Position Offset, which is the position in relation to the controller, Lens, which covers depth of field, focal length and dolly zoom and a couple of extra things. Wiggle, which is a group of controls that easily allows you to apply some interesting and very nice handheld effects to the camera. And Utility, which is pretty much self-explanatory. Refresh expressions, bake the expressions, duplicate the rig, all the setups and utility functions that you can imagine. If you're only interested in a particular feature or you just need a quick refresher on something, feel free to jump to any of the time codes that are on screen. They will take you to just that particular feature and you can watch from there. Otherwise, sit back, relax, and let's jump in. Installation is a breeze. Simply copy the plugin to the correct plugin folder for your operating system and After Effects version, restart After Effects, and there you go. Setup is just as easy. Inside of your After Effects composition, create a null object, apply the Handycam effect, and click the Setup button. From there, you're good to go. It will automatically create the camera and rename the nulls, set up all the expressions, and everything else. The orbit controls in Handycam have inside the X, Y, and Z. They'll always be the first thing you see when you open it up. The X, Y, and Z controls give the user the ability to orbit the camera around the control object. Much like Multi's camera rig, the orbit controls rotate or pivot and allow fluid, easily orbiting shots. One of the things you'll notice is that no matter which way you orbit these controls, Y is always left and right, and X is always up and down. A quick uh, plug, if you're curious on why and how that is, feel free to check out the plugin autopsy that will be coming out quite shortly after this Handycam quick start tutorial, and we go into a little bit more detail about exactly why and how the uh, Handycam rig does this. The cam orients controller button right here may seem a little weird by the name, but it's actually quite simple. Ticking it will make the camera controller, well, look at the camera. So if I turn this off, the null is always facing world space. Moving it left and right moves left and right in world space. However, ticking this on means it will point at the camera. I orbit this way and then I move left and right as the controller and I'm moving left and right in camera space. Inside the advanced controls, you only have one controller, and that is the rotation order. I'm gonna give a real quick overview, but I've gotta say right now, I do not recommend that you touch this controller unless you have a good understanding of gimbals, because this order basically allows you to try and change the rotation order to prevent gimbal lock. But it's for you to mess around with if you want. I'm not going to explain gimbals, unfortunately, because that is beyond the scope of this video. As said earlier, if you actually want to know what this does from a more technical standpoint and gimbal, what gimbals are, feel free to check out the plugin autopsy, which, as I said, we release shortly after the release of this quick start video. The target option in the look at group allows you to target which object you want the camera to, well, look at. So, for example, to begin with, and by default, it's set on Handycam controller. This is why whenever you rotate around, it will look at the little controller that you got there. However, this can be set to anything, even none. For, for example, if we set it to this little circle here, it focuses on the circle. And as the circle moves around, like so, the camera will look at it. Very handy. Something to note, if the target is set to none, like so, then the orientation is based off of every other parameter. Orientation here, X rotation, Y rotation on the camera, or other features like that. Though we recommend using the look at feature, as these others can be a little bit confusing. The offset controller comes in handy when, for example here, your look at target isn't quite correct. The target that it uses is the actual object's orient, uh, or origin. So on solids, that's the corner of it, which as we know, isn't the center. This offset works in world space and allows you to slightly move and adjust where exactly you are looking. This is not relative to the camera's orientation, which means no matter the rotation of the object or anything else, this will always work. So here, you just slide it up a little bit and there we go. We're looking at more of the center here. 
Local Transform is a new feature introduced in version 1.1 of Handycam. It allows you, to, quite similarly to position offset or moving the actual camera around, to offset the camera, well, in its position. However, it uses what I mentioned earlier as camera space. So this X, or truck, as people who are familiar with film uh, may be familiar with, moves you left and right. That's not left or right on the X axis, that's left or right to where the camera is looking. Y will move you up or down to where the camera is looking, and Z, obviously, in or out. That gives you a lot more control or freedom for panning, trucking, etc, etc, in the actual direction the camera is looking. So if I rotate this all the way around here, I'm still looking here. Now, I will always move left or right to the way I'm looking, and I won't continue to look at that thing. It actually offsets where you're looking as well. Position offset is a pretty damn simple one. Think of it exactly like you would as the position of an object in comparison to or relation to its parent. The child, in this case, is effectively the camera and the parent is the null. Changing these changes the camera's position as if its world zero is always the null. We move the null forwards and right. The position offsets don't change, but the relative position in world space does. By default, Z is set as a, a little bit of math worked out when you create the camera, um, but you can set it to anything you like. Zero will obviously push you towards the camera, and as you increase or decrease it, you push in and out of the null. This works in before orbit, so if I set these to zero and zero, then obviously Z pushes me towards or away. However, if the orbit isn't zero and zero, then this pushes me well, not in the world Z direction. The lens options are when things start to get a little bit pretty. Enabling the depth of field is, well, as simple as hitting this little enable button, which just likes sitting enable on the camera here, and it's in all this nice little pretty depth of field. But as you can see, it's looking a little plain. So we can start to mess around with the options. Aperture is a direct link to the aperture on the camera. Same with the blur amount, which we can crank right up here. The blur quality, as you can see, all the different versions there. Focus distance, which controls, well, the focus distance, or the position in which the camera is in focus. As you can see, I bring it really close and the Hanigam text disappears. We're at just the right spot, and you get this gorgeous depth of field right here. And just for kicks, you can also set the focus layer. Let's say I can't quite get the focus distance. It's uh, just can't quite get the uh, the right number. If I set the focus layer to the text, it will automatically work out the distance for me, which means no matter how far away I am, let's say I crank myself right back, it will always stay in focus. Or if I bring myself really, really close, like so, once again, the text is still in focus. Very, very handy. Just like with the position offset in the look at section, there is also a focus offset. Notice how if I set this to none, and the focus distance is the option, where if I set this to an actual layer, then it's the focus offset. If your focus doesn't happen to be right, well, you can always manipulate this. Just giving you a little bit more fine control of what you're dealing with. The focal length is one of my favorite features uh, for a reason that, well, it was fun to make and get working. It sets the focal length or millimeter length of the lens. So by default, it's at 50. This is a pretty standard lens length in most cameras, but you can change it to whatever you like. Here, I can crank it right back and you start to get some seriously warping effects. Or I can bring it real far in and get that uh, kind of zoom lens that you've got going on. Now, an interesting little feature, when this dolly zoom button is clicked, and like so, and you change the focal length, it actually shifts the camera's position backwards and forwards, making sure that everything that was in frame stays in frame. But it kind of squishes what you see. Think of it like when you uh, watch the old Hitchcock movies and you get that vertigo effect, or uh, Lord of the Rings when Frodo is standing in front of the cave uh, before it gets attacked by the spider. It's a very common effect used to display fear or motion or something along those lines, and now it can be done very easily with just a little bit of a tick box. One of the things that goes a long way into creating a 
realistic and nice looking shot is wiggle or more specifically the handheld look unfortunately it can be kind of a pain in the ass to rein in the wiggle parameters to get them to just look right so we've done it for you Increasing the frequency will, as you can imagine, increase the amount that it wiggles. So if I set this to 5 and then set the amplitude to handheld to 10, then we get this nice little uh, soft handheld kind of look. One of the things that this amplitude handheld actually does that the normal wiggle doesn't is it will move the camera left and right more than it will move in and out. Like a real hand, you notice that when you holding a camera your hands drift left and right and up and down more than they drift inwards and outwards or forwards and backwards and that's something that we've uh, added into the amplitude handheld to create more of that handheld look the focus as well can be used to adjust the focus slightly uh, though this one is probably used less often but basically it'll wiggle the focus in and out based on the frequency and the amplitude and finally, the utility panel, which contains, well, as you can imagine, utilities. At the top, Refresh Expressions reapplies the expressions in case there are any issues with them. If we look at them here, if you happen to have deleted them, for example, like so, and something doesn't work, Refreshing will reapply everything and you're good to go. The Bake Expressions utility is quite handy if I do say so myself. Let's say you've gone ahead and animated your camera. You've put in your keyframes, everything's great, but now you still need to send it down the pipeline and guess what? The guys in the render farm don't have the handy cam effect, meaning nothing's gonna work. To fix that, you simply hit Bake Expressions, which creates keyframes for every single frame, and then delete the handy cam controller. Remember to also go through and remove the expressions as well. Save the file, send it off, and there you go. All the movement and everything else you did is ready to be used on any particular project that doesn't have Handicam. To unbake those expressions, you can either hit Control-Z or go through and select and remove these. Unfortunately, After Effects' uh, API or SDK does not have an easy way to do that automatically. Due to the way that the Handicam controller syncs up with the Handicam camera, you cannot simply select the two and hit Control D. You're going to get all sorts of funky little errors and interesting other things. Simply selecting the Handicam controller and hitting Duplicate Rig will give you the exact same result, but cleaner and make sure everything works. But in case you have done something like duplicated your composition or whatever else, and your camera and your controller are not in sync, that's where the brand new Link Selected Camera button comes in. I select a camera, first sorry, I select my controller, lock it so that it always stays, select the camera and hit this link selected camera. You know it's done it correctly if it, well, selects the null that is being done correctly and from there everything should sync. All these utilities, setup, refresh expressions, etc, etc should all operate fine. That is the gist of the utilities panel right there. And there you have it, in a very short amount of time we have this gorgeous shot lovely little effects happening, some handheld wiggle, maybe a little bit of orbiting if we want to too, and we can easily, and I want to specify easily, look at objects or change things or whatever else. If you have any questions, please feel free to email us or send us a tweet or comment on one of our YouTube videos. And if you want to check out exactly how this was made or the autopsy, if you will, of this plugin, feel free to check out our YouTube channel, uh, which I will link in the description of this video, or you can click on the little subscribe button because shortly after this quick start video is released our plugin autopsy for Handicam we released where James and I break down some of what we did the challenges we faced and a little bit more of the thought pattern behind this thank you for watching and enjoy your plugin